What is going on everybody, Jay's Two Cents here, and I've started putting together the parts for my white and green build, which I, you know, I'm terrible at coming up with names for these things. I'm thinking something like uh, Project Peppermint or something like that. I don't know, that's kind of cheesy, but whatever the case may be, uh, I'll be taking the opportunity when I build this system here to do a few like how-to videos, especially when it comes to water cooling, because I mentioned in the last video that we just don't have enough water cooling stuff this summer. So one of the things that we're gonna be doing, obviously, is water cooling the graphics card that's going inside this unit. So even though I have done uh, one or two of these in the past, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do another how-to video on how to install your EK water blocks, uh, graphics card water block. Now it does pretty much apply to most graphics card blocks on the market. Some of the you know, instructions are gonna vary a little bit based on the block. But anyway, you get a general idea of how easy it is to actually do this, so you guys will feel a little less scared and daunting at, at doing this because really it's not hard at all. In fact, you got, I'm going to do this video, you guys are going to realize how easy it is and you're going to be like, we need to watch it, Jay. This stuff is easy enough. Don't do that. The Octane Gaming Gear Combo from Cooler Master features seven backlighting colors, turbo mode, a Vago 3050 optical sensor, along with four levels of DPI adjustment. Now you can pwn noobs without pwning your wallet. Click the link in the description to learn more. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the camera angle, I'm gonna push it down into kind of the workspace here and show you guys how I install these water blocks, the tools that I use, and like I said, just show you guys, it's not hard, it's not hard at all. It's really easy, I think people get a little bit scared at the idea of taking their coolers off their graphics cards because they think these things are extremely fragile and they're gonna, they're gonna break it if they breathe on it the wrong way, and that's just not the case, so. Let's just go ahead and stop talking and let's go ahead and do it. Now, no making fun of my cycling tan line. It hurts my feelings and it makes me sad. No, in all seriousness, uh, I don't even care. Anyway, there are three general tools that I pretty much use when I do these jobs. I've shown this before a million times. I've had this stupid little Husky uh, six-in-one or whatever they're called screwdriver for quite a while. It's got a big Phillips and a big flathead on either side plus a six mil and an eight mil driver bit. You're gonna need some scissors and you're gonna need an anti-static workspace. Now I've been using this thing now for a couple of years. This is a CM Storm Power RX mouse pad, but it's a rubbered surface. And so it's a perfect anti-static surface because it's not going to generate static as opposed to working on carpet or maybe a cloth mat or something. I like to use this guy, that's why it's all beat up. I've been using this as my workspace for quite a while. Now we are using the EKFC Titan X block, which works on Titan X as well as 980 Ti. Uh, and this is the nickel plexi version. Now this is not the full length water block like you would see right here on my 980. This is one of the 980s that came out of Skunk Works. And you can see the full length water block comes all the way to the end of the card. But this guy right here is only gonna come to about right here. It's not gonna do the entire length of the card which is gonna make the card a little bit lighter overall. Plus it's in the nickel plexi, so it's gonna be see-through. You'll be able to see the coolant and it's gonna look really, really nice. Now optionally, uh, the back plates do not come with the blocks. So of course I do have a back plate and this is the nickel plated back plate. I think it's gonna look real nice, especially in this system being so reflective. And of course you need your graphics card. Now before you start taking this thing apart or doing anything on this, just go ahead and set it aside and open up your water block packaging and get familiar with the instructions. I know we guys like to be like, we don't need instructions, we can just look at it and figure it all out on our own. Well, you know, that can be a costly mistake if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. So I suggest you eat a little bit of your pride and you read the instructions. Inside the box, you'll find a packaging of hardware, the number of who checked it, as well as some thermal compound. Now this thermal compound is important because it is non-conductive. So you're gonna to want to use the compound that comes with the card. I've been using it all along. I've never had any issues whatsoever. You're gonna have some pre-cut and some non-pre-cut uh, thermal pads on here. This is gonna be for all your uh, RAM chips. And then you've got your instructions. And of course, you've got the beautiful piece of hardware itself the water block. Now that we're ready to start taking apart the graphics card, uh, take note of where all the screws are. You don't wanna miss any of these screws and try and take the thing apart because you could damage the board that way. You could over bend it, could crack it, could break a, a lead, something. So you're always gonna have four main screws right here surrounding the GPU with springs on them. These are the four main screws that are actually holding the cooler to the GPU die. I tend to personally start with those. 
Uh, but again, you're just gonna wanna make sure you get all of the screws out. Now on NVIDIA graphics cards, there's also two screws right here in the, uh, right here, in the front of the graphics card that are holding the cooler. Don't forget these two guys right here. I've seen, I don't know how many times, people forget these and they start trying to yank their cooler out and they cause damage because they get, didn't get these two main screws. Now don't confuse those two with the, the three smaller ones on here. The three smaller ones on this card are actually holding the display ports and the HDMI to the card itself. So you don't want to undo those. It's kind of nice that NVIDIA started using Phillips screws on these. There was a while there where they used hex head. I don't know if that was just to try and deter people without hex head screwdrivers from being able to take apart their cards. But I think now that water cooling has become so much more mainstream, uh, a lot of companies are actually, including NVIDIA, are starting to become much more friendly with uh, allowing people to water cool their cards without even voiding warranty. So that's always nice. All right, once you've double checked that you've gotten all your screws out, the two from the front, as well as everything on the back of the PCB, uh, this is the part right here where you want to be gentle because you do have cured thermal compound on, on the actual heat sink itself, which is going to become like a glue once it's you know completely cured, as well as all of the thermal pads on each one of the GPU uh, VRAM chips, as well as the VRMs back here. So those all are sticky and it's going to make it feel like the card isn't coming apart. And if it's not coming apart and you, you try and try and try and you've twisted and you've rotated and you can't get it to come off, then you want to make sure that you didn't miss any screws. But if, if you're confident that you didn't miss any screws, then all you got to do here is I, I tend to start from the back and just kind of do a little wiggle. Yes, there's going to be a little flex in the card. Don't let it freak you out. And then it will come apart. Now, don't just yank the card apart because as you can see, you've got two plugs in the back. You've got one for the LED and one for the fan. So you're going to want to be very gentle when you unplug these. That way you can use them again if you need to in the future, if you want to put this thing back to stock. So you want to make sure that you don't break any of those wires. So here is the naked graphics card. It's actually not too big, huh? People seem to think graphics cards are so much bigger than they are because the size of the cooler adds. But uh, for now, go ahead and set that aside. And we don't want to lose any of these screws. So we're just going to go ahead and put all of these screws back where they go in the, in the actual uh, cooler, the stock cooler. That way, if you ever need to put this thing back to stock, even if you had these things sitting in a Ziploc bag or something, you could still lose that bag. But if you screw them all back into their respective slots, you'll know where they go, and uh, you'll know where they are as long as you don't lose your cooler. If you lose your cooler, well, then you're kind of you're kind of ass out of luck. I guess you'd be going to some forums trying to find somebody selling a used one, huh? Uh, I guess I forgot to mention you're going to probably need some rubbing alcohol as well as a microfiber cloth or a coffee filter or something that's non-fibrous. Even though microfiber says fibers, I. I use it because we need to clean off all this old thermal paste right here. So just take some isopropyl alcohol, anything 70% or higher, and just get off all of that old rubbing comp or that old uh, thermal paste on there. Now it's not important that you get down in all these little cracks and all of the different traces that are around the GPU. I just like to do it because when you put on the new block, inevitably it's going to get down in those crevices. So it just keeps there from being too much buildup on there. But that's it. We've now got a nice clean GM200 chip here ready to receive a, uh, a nice water block. Now what you can do too, and I do highly recommend, is just take a little bit of alcohol to the top of each one of the RAM chips because it did have that uh, heat pad on there or that thermal pad on there which has a little bit of grease on it which will make the new thermal pads uh, a little bit hard to stick on. They won't actually stick to the chips if they've got any of that residue that's left on there because it makes them slick. So once everything's nice and clean, pretty much what we're gonna do now is go ahead and get the block ready to install. Now this next part here, you're gonna need the instructions because we have to know where to put all the thermal pads. Now all the pre-cut pads are gonna go on the RAM chips that are surrounding the GPU. And the ones that are not pre-cut, you'll have to cut to length to put on the VRMs. Now pay attention to the instructions. They tell you which pads go where, and it is different per card. So you're gonna have to look at your instructions and not just look at this video. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now an easy trick that you can do to figure out uh, what you need to cut and where 
is the thermal pad material is actually pretty soft. So if you take it and you put it on top of the chokes or anything that you need to actually cut and get an outline on, you can kind of get an imprint on there of where you would need to cut. So now you guys can see, you can do, I can just cut a strip based on where these are actually indented right there. I don't know if the camera actually picks that up, but now I know exactly what size I need to cut it. All right, so this is the most controversial part of the video every single time I make it, and that is the application of the thermal interface material. Now you wanna be careful when you're using their little applicator thingy because it tends to just kind of like shoot out. Anyway, so you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit careful, maybe start it somewhere on a piece of paper and then once it's flowing you can, uh, or it's unstuck, I should say, this little syringe kind of gets stuck. Now they recommend an X as well as a plus type of a, of a pattern on their GPU. Now I'm going to trust EK over all of the armchair quarterbacks on the internet because they're the ones who made it. So they're the guys who I trust. If you don't want to do it their way, then do it your way. That's all there is to it. I don't know why this has to be such a big old debate. And I know this looks like an awful lot of compound. It kind of is, <clears throat> but you really do want it to fill the entire die because unlike a CPU, which has a heat spreader, that shiny part is the GPU. So you want every bit of that covered and it is gonna run over the sides and into that channel around the GPU and that's fine because it's non-conductive. But you do want every bit of that shiny part covered uh, once it compresses and actually spreads out. Now for this next part, I like to take the box and set it underneath the GPU like this because now when you take the block and you actually apply it, uh, you'll find, you'll see that the actual I.O. or the, the display mechanism here, whatever you call that, is taller than the graphics card. So when you flip it upside down, this would just plop off. <clears throat> but if you take the box, you can hang that part off the edge of the box, and you can keep the card nice and flat so that as you are installing all of your screws, then you're not going to have any issues uh, with the block wanting to fall off. So now go ahead and dump out your little baggie of bits here. Don't lose any of them though. That would make for a bad day. And follow the instructions when it comes to putting everything together. Now I'm gonna start with the four main screws that surround the GPU, just like we took them off. We're gonna put everything back together pretty much in a reverse order. And make sure you use these little rubber, or these little plastic standoffs there as well, because those are going to be giving you uh, uh, protection for your board so you don't actually break or crunch anything. Now also make sure you don't over tighten this. Remember the block is made out of copper which is a soft metal and the standoffs are made of steel so you can easily strip those out. These don't need to be super tight. This isn't a car. You don't have to torque them down to inch pounds or anything like that. Just get them snug. Now the cool thing about the EK backplate if you look at the instructions is even though this is not a Titan X so I don't need to put on any of the standoffs or the chips uh, it does actually provide some cooling to the back of the GPU socket. As you can see right here, uh, we are going to be putting in a thermal pad right behind the GPU die, as well as the back side of the VRM. So we are going to be transferring some heat to this plate so that we have a bigger surface area to carry away some of that heat. So this is why the debate of whether or not back plates actually do anything for cooling really depends on the way it's applied to the back of the GPU. If they're just stuck on there with screws and they're not touching anything on the back, then they're not offering any cooling benefit whatsoever. But the nice thing about EK backplates is they actually do offer some cooling benefit. Now what you can do right now before we get to the backplate is just kind of hold it up to your graphics card and you can see which screws are actually gonna be used through the backplate right here. So you can just kind of go, okay, well these two screws I can go ahead and put in there. Uh, these guys right here I can go ahead and put in there. And then the other ones are gonna be screwed through the backplate. Now these two screws up here in the front, actually you're gonna use the longer screws that come with the uh, EK kit because they are going to be using a nut to actually hold them together because the block doesn't come over that far. But it does come with these, uh, with these little nuts. <laughs> nuts. And you're gonna just screw those together and they're gonna to squeeze together to hold the front plate uh, together to the graphics card. Otherwise the whole graphics card would just kind of flop around. So you're gonna do that for both of the two farthest forward screws, at least for the 980 Ti. Remember guys, 
your applications may vary. Okay, so if you weren't doing a back plate, then you would just go ahead and do these last two or last four screws here, and then you would be done. But of course we are doing a back plate. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply the thermal pads to the back of the inside of the back plate here. And then we will screw it on and then we'll be done. I'm a little disappointed in the way that when you do this square here that you have to actually cut two pieces to make it fit. Cause EK used to give you a square that was pre-cut to fit in there. Lately they've been kind of cutting that corner and not doing that for you. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I guess it's not, it's not too bad. So we also are gonna to need to put a strip of one millimeter uh, right here on this guy. Now the hardware that came with your back plate is the hardware that you're gonna use uh, on the back. They're not the same screws. As you can see, these are sort of a stainless steel. They're entirely different. In fact, they give you more than you even need, but hey, that's good, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push these through and we are not going to uh, tighten these down until we get all of the screws into all of the holes for the same reason I mentioned earlier. Now two of these on the back here, actually, I need to mention, are gonna be very similar to the front where I mentioned that we have the, uh, the nuts that go through. There's gonna be a couple longer screws that are gonna go in the back here, and as you can see, or maybe you can't, but they provided two nuts that go on the back, that's fun to say, they gave you two nuts that go on the back and that's where those, uh, these, these nuts right here are gonna go with the longer screws. Well, there she is, one GTX 980 with a brand new EK nickel water block on there. Last thing to do is take off the little protective uh, films on the EK logo and install her in your brand new, or maybe it's not brand new, but your new water-cooled graphics card into your PC. Well, there you go, guys. It makes a little bit of a mess behind me, as you can see, but then you end up with one sexy ass graphics card. And I really like the way that the nickel water block uh, or the back plate looks on this thing, especially when you have a, a white build like I'm doing. Unfortunately, it shows fingerprints and stuff really badly. I have to clean this off. But yeah, I think it looks freaking amazing. Look at that. Oh. I can signal airplanes with this thing. All right, guys, well, there you go. Let me know what other how-tos you'd like to see, and we'll do some more how-tos with this build behind me uh, as it's going together. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.